Ma'am, can I start? Yes, please. Yes, please. Thank you, ma'am. Good afternoon, respected teachers. Our speaker for the session, Mr. Shailendra Singh, parents and dear fellow students. We are pleased to welcome Mr. Shailendra Singh, a very special guest from OP Jindal Global University, Sonipat, Haryana. He is an assistant director at OP Jindal Global University, and today he will be guiding us by giving career counselling regarding multidisciplinary education system in JGU. OP Jindal Global University is a non-profit global university set up in 2009 by the government of Haryana and recognized by the University Grants Commission. The university has received the highest A grade of National Accreditation and Assessment Council. In 2019, JGU was awarded the prestigious Institution of Eminence by the government of India. The university has been ranked among the top 800 universities in the world in the QS World Ranking 2020. It is a philanthropic in initiative to serve an institutional excellence, to serve as institutional excellence in higher education, a research intensive university with modern facilities and innovative learning culture. JGU is consciously breaking down the boundaries between discipline. Students can take up different courses from different schools. Also, the most effective universities are always multidisciplinary. And with that, I now invite Ms. Shalinda Singh to address you all. Welcome, sir. Thank you so much, Bhavyanshi, for such a warm welcome and for introducing our university. A very good afternoon to all the students of DLDAV. Uh, I'll be sharing my screen. Uh, so I'll do one thing. I'll divide this session into two parts. But the first part, I'm going to talk upon the importance of multidisciplinary education in 21st century. And the second part, I'll focus how at Jindal Global University, uh, we ensure that multidisciplinary education is inculcated in the curriculum and teaching pedagogy of the faculties. At the end of the session, if you have any questions, I'll be more happy to answer those uh, questions, right? So I'm present. I'm just sharing my screen now. Uh, I would request ma'am to please let me know uh, if you know uh, the screen is visible or not. Sure, sir. Is the screen visible, ma'am? Uh, yes, sir. Yes. Can we can see Thank that? Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Pleasure. It's all a pleasure to interact with the students of uh, you know DLDV school. In fact. Uh, till last year, we used to come down to your school and we used to meet and interact with the students. Uh, and, in, you know, at the initial, at the beginning of this year, if anyone who uh, must have told me that, you know, these sessions are going to happen virtually or we are going to have a virtual career fair, I would have really scoffed at that idea. In fact, I would have snubbed that point of view of the people. Today, uh, you know, the whole year has come to an end. The whole year has been a virtual year. And we have been taking these virtual sessions and virtual career fairs across the country. In fact, across the globe, I would say that. Welcome to the VUCA world. Uh, we are all living in a VUCA world. What does VUCA stand for? Uh, VUCA means volatile, uncertain, complex, and ambiguity. Yes. So we are all living in a VUCA world. And why we say that? Because the world is moving at a very fast pace, right? And products and technologies are becoming obsolete overnight. So the positive side to this is that with the new products and new technologies, uh, the new skill sets and new profiles are coming into the market space. Yeah. As per the report of World Economic Forum, 65% of youth will end up doing jobs that are yet to be created. In fact, in 1995, uh, there was a book written uh, by James Collins, Built to Last. Now, this book was basically a research by James and Jerry both and they identified 18 companies which they felt may what happen these companies are going to be there forever in the you know on the planet now irony is that out of 18 companies two companies i mean three companies have already gone bankrupt they no more exist and the, more than half the companies mentioned in the book are struggling to survive in the market right the kind of innovations that have happened in last three decades in 30 years did not happen in last 150 years 
right? The question is, why is it that the kind of innovations that have happened in the last three decades have not happened in the last 150 years? Yeah. And the answer to this is, yeah, technology has definitely played a vital role in this. But apart from technology, what has really drastically changed, a paradigm shift that has come is towards the approach of problem solving. The approach towards problem solving has changed drastically. I'll, ex I'll explain you with this uh, diagram. So earlier, uh, you know, say a group of people one, from one discipline with a linear approach used to solve the problem and they were not getting any major breakthroughs. Then they realized, but then they realized that, you know, when they were not getting any major breakthroughs, they, they, they decided that let's open the doors for other disciplines also to come and join hands in the research. And when they did that, a major breakthrough started happening, taking place across the globe. We call that as a lateral approach, a lateral thinking approach. So what basically lateral thinking approach means when you are approaching a problem from different perspectives. If any one of you uh, have read a book written by Edward D. Bono, The Six Thinking Hats, uh, you will understand what I'm trying to say here. In, in fact, I would like to suggest that you, know, you should read this book by Edward D. Bono, The Six Thinking Hats. So lateral thinking became the buzzword across the globe because the research scientists started making breakthrough innovations and the world was changing slowly. So quickly, the higher education universities in Western countries, they started approaching the lateral uh, you know, approach in their curriculum also, which we call today as a multidiscipline approach in the curriculum. So how it evolved, I'll just share with some example with you. So it started with STEM education. Uh, science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. But then they realized these are all subjects related to science. So they started with, you know, inviting arts and humanities with them. So it became STEAM education. And then they realized the importance of research and therefore it became STREAM education. Now in India, at school level, you will definitely get to see a lot of STEM education uh, curriculum but STEAM education has, is not yet started in CBSE and ICC board at all. We can uh, see it in Ivy board schools. And STREAM education is nowhere there at the school level. It is at higher education level. Yes. But what if I tell you the new buzzword in the Western country today is NBIC, nanotechnology, biotechnology, information technology, and cognitive sciences. Right. Friends, we should be ready to, you know, uh, for these new acronyms because more and more multidiscipline approaches are going to come in the future. So it should not be any surprise to us. Slowly, things have changed. You know, the workplaces have changed. We are no more working in silos. Now we are working in a multidiscipline team. I'll quickly share some examples with you so that you will get some clarity on what I'm trying to say. Now. Recently, we discovered a black hole. Yes, now, the lady who discovered this black hole, her name is Katie Bowman. Now, Katie Bowman is not an astronomer. Yes, she is not an astronomer at all. She is an algorithm expert, but she was working with the team of astronomers. When I say she was not and she was not an astronomer, it doesn't mean she did not have a basic understanding of astronomy. She did have a basic understanding of astronomy, but she was working with a team of astronomers for three years. The team of astronomers kept sharing images to Katie Bowman and she kept applying algorithm to those images. And finally, one day we discovered black hole. Somewhere in the lab of Microsoft, you know, there is a robotics lab where a team of artificial intelligence and robotics are working together. But along with these two teams, there is a third team which is working with them. And that is a team of psychologists. You know, what is a team of psychologists doing in a robotics lab? The team of psychologists in the robotics lab is that to study the behavior of the robots. In one of the experiments, they concluded that if you're asking a same question to the robot again and again, the robot is losing its temper. Now a machine losing its temper is a threat to humanity, right? So they had to reprogram their robots that may what happen, you are not going to lose your temper. That is the importance of psychology in robotics today. Recently, there was a news that Indian Institute of Science, which is one of the prestigious institute of our country, the, there's a team working to make bricks on moon. Yes, bricks on moon. 
and the team which is working on this project is a team from biology and mechanical engineering right so there's a book written by george gilder now who is george gilder i'll just give you a brief about him now george gilder is a futurologist so for those who don't know what futurologist is futurologists are those people who predict the future of the industry as per their analysis they read a lot they do a lot of analysis and they predict the future of the industry so in mid 90s when there were no smartphones at that time george gilder had predicted that mobile phones are going to become the navigator in our life in the sense he said that mobile phones are going to navigate us and show us directions in the future after reading that report steve jobs instructed his entire team to start working on the navigation on the smartphones so george gilder who is a futurologist has predicted that google is going to fall soon i i I'll again suggest you all to please read this book life after google a very interesting book this is he says that uh, so whatever he has written in the book he is keeping uh, cyber security in mind because we all know that today privacy is a myth right anything can happen uh, you know with the help of technology we are, our accounts are not safe our uh, you know whatever details we have kept in the cloud computing are also not safe they can easily be hacked so privacy is a myth so cyber security being one of the biggest concern george gilder has bet that blockchain is the solution for cyber security and blockchain is going to be the next economy and he says data is no more going to be the oil and because of that google is going to fall the challenge here is the tech giants like microsoft amazon and google are also working on cyber security through quantum computing now what is con now quantum computing can easily break a break the blockchain this is what they assume and they are working on that but till now they have not made any major breakthroughs in uh, you know uh, in the cyber security sphere so now they have realized that quantum computing to be more successful needs the team of quantum physics so now they are joining hands with quantum physics researchers and they are working on cyber security again there is a book written by bruce h lipton again i suggest everybody to please read this book this is a fantastic book which is going to give you goosebumps when you will know what your body what the capabilities of your body are and the capabilities of mind are now bruce h lipton is a biologist he is also a research uh, biologist and he he calls this human body as a community of cells he has gone so deep into that research that he says that we are a community of cells and he strongly emphasizes on this fact that to make major discoveries in human bodies it is very important that a team of biologists biotechnologists and quantum uh, physics work together right why forget steve jobs steve jobs was never not a technology you know person with a technology background he was a calligrapher right his expertise was calligraphy but he joined hands with the uh, you know it guys and he, they developed they made a company called apple which is one of the biggest company today in terms of valuation also Steve Jobs said that I am going to design the product, and you are going to fit in the technology in it. Right? We have ample examples like this, with like you know, with the help of multidiscipline, how we are moving forward, and that is actually going to happen in the future. That we, they will, the industries are going to look forward for a multidiscipline skill set. The challenge arises is when your education is not multidisciplined. How are you going to adapt to it? Right? Today. the universities and institutes have realized this fact that multidiscipline curriculum is very much needed you know there was a research being done uh, we all are aware that in top when there is a global ranking you know across the there's a global ranking by any agency none of the indian universities none of the indian institutes rank in the top 100 universities across the globe one of the reasons that why we don't rank is because indian universities and institutes did not have a multidiscipline curriculum right they they realized the most of the most of the world class universities and ivy league universities have a multidiscipline curriculum which really gives them a lot of push in their research recently there was a news that iit kharagpur has also introduced uh, arts uh, into their classical and folk arts in their curriculum Delhi University, which is hardly known to upgrade their curriculum for decades, have today realized the importance of multidiscipline curriculum, and they have started promoting it that we need a multidiscipline curriculum. And if you are aware of the uh, latest, uh, you know, education policy, national education policy that is released by the central government, they have emphasized on 
a multidiscipline uh, you know curriculum not only at higher education but even at the school level right so how and it, so a group of people did a research you know uh, that what are the skill sets that are required to successfully survive in the 21st century they did a research and they identified four major skill sets that they think that that is really required to you know sail smoothly in this 21st century so it is analytical skills creativity how you're going to build in the networking with the people your relationship with the people and how organized and disciplined you are yeah so we can have one full session on this four skill sets later on uh, so some other day but if i focus on the first two skill sets that is analytical skills and creativity these are basically problem solving skill sets right and problem solving skill sets let me tell you one thing dear friends any human being on this planet whether it is you me any human being on this planet can solve a problem to the best of his or her knowledge he or she has right for example if i am from a commerce background and if i am only studying subjects related to commerce and subject someone approaches me for my suggestions on science problems i would not be able to you know contribute in that and vice versa if i am from a science background and i am just studying subjects related to science and someone approaches me with a problem with economics i would not be able to contribute with you know in that part so what is basically happening is if i am limiting my knowledge i am limiting my problem solving skill sets and if i have to enhance my problem solving skill sets i will have to enhance my knowledge base that is as simple as it is right how does it really work you know i'll share one example of one of our student now the student is studying uh, liberal arts in from uh, in, at our university jindal global university so one day i just asked him what are you up to uh, so he said i'm i'm i want to i want to study coding so i was like why do you want to study coding because you are pursuing liberal arts he said i want to make video games so i was like okay so if you wanted to make video games why are you studying liberal arts you would have chosen something related to technology maybe engineering right so he said no sir apart from liberal arts i have also cho uh, chosen subjects uh, like english literature yeah music uh, expressive arts and psychology so i was like how are these subjects going to really help you in your video game so he said sir it's very simple with english literature i am going to create better stories right with expressive art which allows me to observe people their movement i am going to put those movement in the characters in my video game with the music i am going to understand music and i am going to create a better background score for my video games and with psychology i am going to understand the mind of the people how they think and i am going to work on it accordingly this is how really multidiscipline education is helping students at jindal global university another example i'll give you is of a student she is an alumni today she is working with google so we just asked her what are you doing at google because she is also a student of liberal arts and she did her psychology so she said that she is working on a profile where they are understanding the behavior of the people by the post that they upload on the social networking sites okay so at op jindal global university we ensure that each and every student is inculcated with this multidiscipline skill set and the reason why i am saying multidiscipline skill set is important is because in my earlier slide i talked about world economic forum report right so the same report the world economic forum report in 2019 also highlights emphasizes on one point and it says that the students who are studying in school today that means you and your juniors are going to change your career minimum 4 to 5 times in your life that means i'm not talking about changing your job they are saying you will change your career minimum 4 to 5 times in your life which means every decade you are going to change your career for that you need to have a very agile approach agile means you have to be very flexible in your approach you cannot be uh, you know you cannot be adamant that i'm going to do this you have to be very flexible you will have to adapt to new skill sets so for example when i did my masters at that time there was nothing called social media there was nothing called data science or data analytics nothing was there but today if i know that data analytics is really making it's a lucrative career 
And if I am not able, I'm not ready to adapt, you know, going and learning that analytical skill sets, I'm losing a lucrative career, right? So OP Jindal Global University, which is a philanthropic initiative by Mr. Naveen Jindal, it's located in Delhi and CR Sonipat. Uh, when things get normalized, please do visit the campus. So the university was set up in 2000, uh, in 2009. And uh, in just less than one, one decade, the university has been quoted uh, as one of the most promising and upcoming university of this country by the media. In fact, uh, as Bhavanshi had uh, said in the introduction, in 2020, uh, uh, last year, the, we, the QS agency, which ranks universities at global level, they have ranked us as the number one private university of India. They have also ranked us as India's number one university in social sciences, arts and humanities. 2019, the central government have selected us under the Institute of Eminence. Now, for those who don't know what Institute of Eminence is, it's an initiative by central government wherein they have identified 20 universities, 10 private and 10 public universities out of 900 universities in India. They have identified 20 universities and which they believe have the capability to compete with world-class universities. So we have been selected under the private universities, uh, universities category. Though there are certain parameters which have really helped us, you know, reach these milestones. And these parameters have also helped us in winning accolades in the education space. Now, given the paucity of time, I won't be able to touch base, uh, you know, get in depth of all the points, but I will definitely touch base few of them for your reference. But I would also request you all to please visit the website for in-depth information about any point that I'm discussing here. All the uh, information is there and updated on the website. Now we are, a, you know, there's a reason we call ourselves as a global university. One of the reasons is the faculty student ratio that we maintain is of world class, uh, you know, standard level. So we maintain a ratio of one is to 10. In fact, this year it has come down to one is to nine. Now every faculty member, uh, the role of faculty member at, uh, because we are a research focused university, the role of the faculty is not limited to just teaching. Yeah, the role of faculty is more than teaching. They play a role of a mentor with the students. They guide them at each and every step. They ensure that uh, the research that they are doing, uh, they get a proper guidance. And that is only possible when you have a small group size. It is not possible. You know, a focused strategy is not possible in a big uh, batch size. So we have a, a faculty student ratio of one is to 10. Most of the faculty members come with a very rich experience, either of industry or academics, which they bring it in their teaching pedagogy, which is reflected in the classroom, in the curriculum and the case studies that they share with the students. And uh, so some key highlights I'll say about, about the faculty also that 73% of the faculties have, uh, you know, the international degrees with them. Now, out of the 73% faculties, 42% faculties have international degrees from top 200 global universities. And 17% of the faculties are of foreign nationals. When I say foreign nationals, we have faculties from USA, Europe, UK, China, Australia, across the globe. Another reason why we call ourselves as a global university is because our, you know, collaborations with more than 250 international universities in 52 countries. So when I say international collaborations, these collaborations mean student exchange program, dual degree programs, summer schools, international internships and joint research opportunities. These are exclusive tie-up. Every semester, more than 150 students go to more than 100 plus universities for their semester exchange programs. As I, as I said, for more in-depth information about all these points that I'm sharing, please visit our website. I'll share the link of the website at the end of the presentation. Yeah, and we also have 31 dual degree programs with our uh, partner uh, partnering universities. We are a multidiscipline university. I have given you the example also how we are, these students are really benefiting out of this multidiscipline curriculum that we have. Every semester, more than 200 elective subjects are offered to the students to pick and choose from every semester, right? Talking about infrastructure and facilities, uh, we are spread across 82 acre campus. It's a fully residential campus. When I say fully residential, the students have to stay in the campus. 
and the classrooms and the hostels are air conditioned as i said we are a research university so we have an exhaustive library with access to over 9000 books and 12000 journals the dining is taken care by sodexo but we also have a food court uh, which have outlets like dominos burkos moti mahal many more uh, i'm sure you are not going to miss your home food and again i'll i'll uh, extend this uh, invitation to all the students here that when the things get normalized please try to visit the campus along with your parents we we welcome you all to the you know campus in fact there is a virtual link uh, on the website if you want you can go on the website and through virtual link you can take a virtual tour of the campus everything is happening virtually so why not have a virtual tour also this year and maybe next year when 2021 begins we can you are you can step into the campus talking about the student life it's an active uh, you know campus throughout the years there are more than 28 clubs and societies that are run by the students by themselves throughout the year they keep on uh, organizing cultural fest and activities and events you will also find our students uh, involved in sports facilities because we have inter sports competition and inter sports competition so you will see them playing cricket volleyball basketball lawn tennis badminton we also have a olympic size uh, swimming pool talking about alumni our alumni are working with uh, you know uh, leading companies like google amazon american express they're working with think tanks like enby pwc mckinsey they're working with international law firms yeah and the students who have chosen to go for higher education like phd and masters they are pursuing their higher education from world class universities and ivy league universities as of now we are offering 20 programs so here 18 are there two more i'll update you what are the uh, two more programs that we are coming up with 18 programs undergraduate programs that we offer are ba llb bba llb bba honors plus mba bba honors ba legal studies ba global affairs ba political science ba economics ba social science and policy liberal arts and humanities journalism and media studies environment studies and entrepreneurship and finance psychology and counseling bcom honors b arc ba in built environment studies and in uh, b design so ba llb bba llb and bba plus mba and b arc are a five year program rest of there are three year programs there are two more program that we are coming up with is ba in fine arts and then another program that we are coming up is in uh, uh, or uh, in the uh, mba in the bba only we are going to come up with we are coming up with a specialization in family business and finance so the details of the these two programs are very uh, soon it will be updated on the website as i said please visit the website for in depth information about these programs the curriculum that we ha- these programs have the faculties associated all the information about the faculty is there on the website their education their uh, the, the research publication that they are doing everything is mentioned on the website coming to the admission process it's a holistic approach that we have for all of our programs except for law and architect it's a three step online process first is the uh, application stage you need to go online fill in the applications and submit the application once you have submitted the application the second step is giving our online test called jsat jindal scholastic aptitude test and once you are given the test and if you qualify through that score of the test the final round is interview with the faculty now jsat is basically a 120 minute it's online test you don't need to so we have tie up with pearson view and we have test centers across the country more than 100 test centers so you can choose date and time as per your convenience but that was when the things were normal and the pandemic was not there but since the pandemic is here everything you can you don't need to go anywhere you can sit at home and you can give the test it's a 120 minute test with 120 multiple choice questions right in case if any of you have appeared for sat examination please do share your score in case if you are qualifying through a sat score then you don't need to give a jsat examination in fact i would uh, suggest every student here to give a sat examination appear for sat examination because sat examination open doors not only for western universities but you it also opens doors for most of the uh, new and upcoming universities of this country students who are looking for admissions in law program they need to appear for the lsat examination you need to appear for lsat and share your score uh, lsat india lsat india score right not lsat lsat india score and students who are wanting to appear for uh, the architect program you need to appear for nata score the last round is the interview round so what basically the faculties are looking forward in an interview is 
how much interested a candidate is uh, for the program, how passionate the candidate is for the program. As I said, we are a research focused university, so communication will be taken, you know, considered. And then what exactly value addition you're going to bring to the campus? The basic question is why you and why not others? Because we have limited seats and we get good number of applications. So you need to prove that why you and why not the next. Right? With this, I come to uh, so scholarship. Yes, we do offer scholarship for any kind of scholarship. Your family income has to be less than 30 lakh rupees per annum. So with this, I come to an end of this session. I am open for the question answers. The link of the website is www.jgu.edu.in. Uh, my email ID is written here in case if you want to uh, ask, you want to write a mail to me, you can shoot a mail to me. My number is there in case you want to get in touch with me, you can get in touch with me. I am open for question and answers. Thank you so much, ma'am. Thank you, sir. In fact, I've been um, hearing some requests from the students to ask questions. So now I would invite uh, all those who were asking me, ma'am, uh, what is this multidiscipline and uh, some other queries you were uh, you were sending me regarding scholarship and all. So you may please uh, put your questions directly to Mr. Challenger and he'll be answering that. Please, uh, uh, you can use your mic to uh, ask the questions or you could send the question in the chat box. The ones who have uh, their mic working are requested to please uh, speak up. Aditya, you had raised your hand. Aditya of Leventy, you raised your hand in between. So you had a query there. Ma'am, I, I got my query solved. OK, yes, sir, sir, then expanded on the subject. And uh, you must have got your answer. So uh, let me see. I had some queries sent that yes, were let me just see if the student is there because I was getting a few queries. Uh, yes, Raga, I can see that you're there. So you, you had a question uh, that you wanted to ask earlier. So could you please uh, put your question up? Raga Vilaventi. Sir, so among the multiple discipline subjects, if a student chooses a new subject, so whether he will going to learn basis in the university? Yes, definitely. So you are going to uh, learn basic. So see, one is you will be doing your major. So uh, for example, you take exam. So which, uh, what is your stream, uh, Raga, if I may know? What stream you're from? Commerce. Commerce with maths or without maths? With maths. Okay, so for example, Raga, we have taken, so for uh, say economics, you have taken. So with economics, you want to uh, say study, uh, so major will be economics, what you will be studying throughout your three years. And say you want to get some sense of, uh, you know, on law. So you pick up subjects from law on public policy or something. So you're not going to master in that, but you're going to definitely get some basic information about what public policy means. So it will not be an in-depth but it will be so it, it will be like breadth of subjects not depth will be the majors minors will be the, uh, this one, right so yes you will be uh, they will start with basic understanding of everything i hope that uh, answers your question yes thanks sir welcome okay uh, so uh, kasur you have a question kasur 12 12c yes ma'am yeah, yes, please ask. You had a number of questions. In fact, that seemed interesting to me. Yes, sir. My first question was that uh, what would be the future perspective of the job for a marketing manager? What will be task actually it involves and how much uh, earning will be included? Okay. So, uh, Kostov, I have also been a marketing person. So, I have 13 years of work experience and I have been into marketing, sales and marketing throughout. And, uh, you know, we, we keep interacting with so many people uh, around. So one thing what this question comes up is how is, uh, you know, AI going to affect the world across? And one thing what I believe and what I have also read is they can come into many things, but two things what they can come not come into sales, marketing and sales, right? At the end of the day, uh, you know, Costa, we are all human beings and we need, we are social beings and we really look forward for a personal touch, a personal interaction. So marketing and sales is always going to be there. It's going to remain there. Yes, new industries will come up. So from your end, uh, what will be more important will be how you, uh, flexible you are in you know understanding these new industries that, that are coming up. So one thing what I would like to suggest all the students here is read as much as possible. Read, read and read. 
the examples which i have quoted today with uh, in the presentation is what i could gather from reading books you know so please read as much as possible i so all of you uh, ma'am all of the students are from commerce background uh, no sir we have humanities students we have commerce uh, students both this okay, was both for commerce them. and humanities okay so read read as much as possible because reading will break you will update you with the upcoming things in the uh, market space so try to read books written by the ceos of the companies for example uh, read hit refresh by satya nadella who is the ceo of microsoft he has uh, uh, talked about mixed reality so what is mixed reality you should know this right so read as much as possible try to uh, read this uh, the interviews of the ceos in the newspapers though they give a you know hint that what the industry is uh, is moving forward with so you will have to adapt yourself you will have to upgrade yourself marketing and sales is always going to be there now coming to your point of the package the salary that is no limit to it even today there are people in sales and marketing who are earning in crores there are also people who are earning in lakhs but there are also people who are earning in thousands that all depends upon how uh, upon your skill set how convinced you are with your product and values okay sir thank you sir Welcome. Okay, sir. So I'm I'm also going to thank you because you have suggested that they should be doing reading, and that I'm uh, certainly very happy with because they are a bit lazy when it comes to reading, and uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> that would help me also. I'm teaching them English, um, and I the English. Yeah, one question yeah, also. Please. Yes, please, Manchu. Uh, sir, uh, what are yes. the benefits of multidisciplinary education for the future point of view? so uh, i if you were there in the presentation uh, himanshu i have shared so many examples as i said the the world is changing towards a multidiscipline approach the workplaces are changing towards a multidiscipline approach so multidiscipline is going to be the backbone of the economy i will say in coming times in if related to the or the education so you will have to be adapted so i'll give you one one very uh, you know if, so as i said the world economic forum said that uh, you will be changing your careers minimum four to five times in your lifetime right so when once when things comes from such a big uh, you know reputed forum it has to be taken seriously not lightly they must have done a good research and that is why they are talking about it at global level right so one of the point they said that you will be changing your career four to five times in your lifetime not job your career career means you are going to change your skill sets you are going to upgrade your skill sets and then you are going to change your job with the industry so you need to have a very agile approach towards it you have to be very flexible towards it i'll give you one example of this in year 2000 the indian banking association the government of india and indian banking association <coughs> association announced a vrs for the bankers now what is vrs it's a voluntary retirement scheme a government job a very lucrative job which is all which also promised a pension to the employees 1 lakh bankers took vrs at that time 1 lakh it was a huge setback it was the government was taken aback that why will a you know a people want to leave a job which is such a, a government job a lucrative job a safe job and they resigned you know they took vrs so a research took place and 30% of the people said that 30 means 30 30% means 30000 people said that they were they knew that the indian bankings are going to get computerized and they are not ready to adapt to that uh, change right so this is the importance of being agile you might end up you know uh, losing up your job if you are not agile you may end up not being a part of the industry that you are uh, not going to you know which is which has a lucrative future so i have given i put a lot of examples on multidiscipline uh, that is the way forward i will request you all to do your undergraduation and your masters from a place whatever course you want to do please do, uh, you know pursue that but do ensure that it has a multidiscipline curriculum Okay, thank you, sir. I guess that's like as you pointed out in your presentation when you were speaking, you were telling that the schools have not actually been um, yeah. able to offer that. That may be the confusion in their mind. That's why they keep asking. Yeah, at school level, that is not happening. That has not happened. CBSE, ICC, and state board schools have not happened. That has not happened yet. Uh, IB board schools, Cambridge board schools have a uh, I, you know multidiscipline curriculum. But the new education policy says that. Uh, the uh, the multidiscipline curriculum has to be there at, at the school level also now now this is so because national education policy is a policy it is not a law so it is up to the school now whether they want to implement that policy or not so this the school which will implement that policy will you know the students will benefit from that yeah you have started in that direction let's hope that it grows further and i saw lavanya you raising your hand so you have a query now yes ma'am sir yeah, i please. would like 
us that can we choose diverse yet opposite subjects like psychology with political science in our in the ba of multi, uh, multiple multiple disciplines yes yes why not you can as i said every semester at jgu students get more than 200 electives to choose from so you can choose from any school any discipline that is up to Or your choice, your interest okay okay thank you sir uh, uh, anyone else who would like to uh, ask a question since i uh, did see another one like the, the speaker is yes rish ah uh, yes ma'am uh, i have a question yeah please shall i all oh, right uh, so what are the prospects of uh, video game development in india in regards to someone with a marketing background i'm sorry i don't know the disturbance uh, i think sir uh, what are the prospects of video game development in india uh, with regards to somebody with a back- marketing background prospects of a marketing background sorry the prospects of video game development in india i'm not getting the term this development video game development sir uh, video game sir he is saying video, video game, game development yes sir okay so uh, see uh, video games again uh, so one thing that is happening with video games is uh, video games is that it is at the cusp of you know where the discussion is going on whether it's a boon or a bane right we have seen lot of uh, people criticizing video games because it is changing the behavior of the students uh, of the people of the children who are playing it uh, there have been cases where the students uh, the, the you know the children have got violent uh, and they have uh, they, they have they have seen a lot of uh, negative changes in their behavior the parents have observed a lot of negative changes in their behavior because they have been playing video games so it is at a cusp of a boon or a bane now the thing is the companies are making video games where you are going which is going to help in enhancing your critical skill sets now right so video games which is going to so all these video games which are, are violent and all will be scuttled down from the market that is for sure because the the, the human rights and all they are all uh, betting on that but a uh, companies are coming up with more uh, video games where the students have to apply their brain they they need to explore things so that that is anyhow you know indirectly helping in uh, you know uh, sharpening their critical and analysis skill sets so looking from that point of view yes video games uh, are going to come up and that's going to be one you know which is going to be in demand and same with marketing point of view uh, if you are created about that product you know how what people want and you are more convinced with that value that what value uh, that uh, video game is going to give to the uh, students it's going to be a promising future okay so uh, hopefully shrish uh, your question is answered uh, it was rejoice who also i think was simultaneously had the speaker on so rejoice you have a question okay not very sure uh, rejoice's mic also uh, had uh, been on then okay uh, i'll have to check the chat box is there a question there uh this Nishi, you have a question. It is regarding uh, something in uh, humanities stream that you have in mind. See, uh, students who are not able to use the speaker may uh, type their question in the chat box. That's also another option available in case you have a problem with the mic right now. You may type your question there. Mom, we are allowed to type. Okay. Rejoice, your mic is. Uh, it seems uh, starting, but I cannot hear you. Yes, ma'am. Can I ask a question, ma'am? Please do. Uh, sir, I have a question that how can I know myself that which jobs qualities are in me, or how to pursue a career which I can contribute my best? Okay. So. Uh... <laughs> uh this is a very uh, you know so this is something which uh, someone from outside cannot answer this question you will have to dig in uh, within you will have to know about yourself uh, uh, and you will you will have to take suggestions from your uh, teachers who really understand you your fr- your friends and your families who understand you they will be uh, you know better uh, in giving suggestions to you now i have so uh, see i have a very bad habit that i don't spoon feed uh, the uh, the students 
I, I believe in giving uh, homework and I believe that you should do uh, you know research and you should uh, you should work more hard on that. I will suggest one book for you now. So you can write down the name of the book. The name of the book is Ikigai. I K I G A I Ikigai. This is one book which I really want you to. So all the students who are really confused about knowing yourself, what you really want to know, what your passion is. You don't know what your passion is. You don't know what you really want to do in life. Read this book, Ikigai. This is one book which is really going to open doors for you, which is going to open your mindset, which will really help you in understanding yourself. I'll repeat the name of the book, I-K-I-G-A-I, -I, Ikigai. I have written my email ID. Once you finish the book, you can get in touch with me. We can have an in-depth discussion on this. You can, so but what, what I really want to, you to do is read that book, write down the points that you have understood from that book about yourself. And then we can definitely sit and we can have an in-depth, uh, you know, discussion on those points. Because till the time I really don't know you, uh, I cannot uh, help you in that. So any any counselor for that uh, reason. So I, my strong suggestion is read that book, do a homework, dig out information. And then, yes, I'm sure you will get very good points from that. And when you will execute, implement those points, uh, you know, it will be, a, uh, I'll say, uh, it, it's, you will be, you'll find yourself as a new person. Because I've, I've read that book and I've suggested and I've gifted that book to a lot of my friends. Thank you, sir. Welcome. Hey, uh, thank you, sir, for answering that. Yes, Minakshi, for that, uh, the question that you asked me, yes, for that. And, uh, uh, so we, uh, actually, when you suggest the reading thing, I, I uh, once again, would, uh, a little embarrassing, but yes, that's many of them are, uh, a bit lazy they would like to be told some tips that was uh, what probably he was looking for because uh, he's a very um, uh, like honest student and a good one but sometimes they're so confused that they want to know how can i know what i'm good for so that basically uh, where do i search in myself to look for a good quality and uh, see if it fits the current job scenario and uh, yeah. that is that is what probably sometimes they are uh, really yeah so why why i'm suggesting that is you know uh, you know rejoice so what's his name rejoice is his name Yes, sir. Rejoice. Rejoice. Yes, yes sir. So, rejoice. Why I'm suggesting that is, you know, because I don't want external, uh, you know, suggestions and external influences to, uh, you know, decide what you really know, what you really are, what you really need to do. It should not be the external uh, environment and external suggestions of the people. It should come from within, right? And to come from within, you will have to know about yourself. Now, why I'm saying you to read that book is there are some tools and uh, suggestions given in the book, how you need, can dig out information from within. Yes. So take out time once you are free from your board examinations, maybe, uh, or maybe when you there is a gap between the pre-boards and the boards, it will not take more than a week uh, for you to finish that book. So that is why I'm suggesting that book to you. So once you read that, you know, go in, go in, in inside, ask yourself this question and you will get answers to it. Yes, rejoice and any other student, you'll have to do that bit at least for yourself. You'll have to look within, surely. Then only you'll be discovering yourself because as teachers, we keep telling you, I, I'm sure the parents also keep telling you that this seems to be a good quality and especially probably you feel that negative qualities are many a times pointed out. But like something that you have to shirk. So uh, don't worry too much. We'll be guiding you further. And as much as you can um, uh, take guidance from what sir has told you, because that's really something very important that uh, I'm sure you all must have learned that um, uh, future is going to be multidisciplinary. So it's not like you're going to be confined if you are uh, studying something in humanities only. So it might cross over to something else too. And as uh, some students were asking if basics will be taught, some basics, but a little bit of uh, work from your own side will be also required that you build up that other uh, subject that probably was not taught to you earlier, but surely more avenues will open then. Yes, any other questions that we have? Any students yes, would like to ask? Can I ask my question? Please, please do. Navyanshi, is sir, it? Sir, uh, how, how can yes, ma'am? Sir, how can one explore about various subjects? Like uh, in school, we are studying uh, certain sets of subjects for now. And what if one wants to explore subjects beyond uh, our streams and? Yeah. So see, uh, one one uh, thing one. What you can get in these uh, universities which are offering a multidiscipline curriculum is the first year is going to be a basic year where you're going to explore different subjects right so we have also seen cases where the student took a major in first year say in something 
but then uh, the second year they have changed their major because they realized that their interest is not in what they chose earlier yes so prior to this i was working with shivnadar university also uh, at shivnadar university also we saw cases where a student uh, took admission in engineering but after a year after exploring other subjects uh, for the first year that student realized that engineering is what uh, not really that they wanted you know so they from engineering they shifted to humanities or management so the beauty of this uh, multidisciplinary university is first year is the year to explore there is no compulsion on the student that that uh, for example if you have chosen economics or commerce or bba as a major you are going to continue with that only you have all the liberty to change your majors afterwards in the second year as well so the first year make the best use of that why i am <laughs> suggesting you know at the school level to develop this habit of reading because even at multidiscipline university you will have to read a lot because uh, your credit scores will be based on different uh, subjects and electives that you will choose and you will have to read a lot so develop that habit uh, from now only and when you will read a lot when you will start reading then you will realize where you know what you are liking and what you are disliking and second year you can make your majors and minors accordingly yeah okay, thank you thank sir you. i think that's it thank you sir uh, basically uh, that is what uh, they need to understand it's not basic mm -hmm. uh, it's it's going to uh, open their mind up to many possibilities and i guess yes. uh, today that is one thing that they've learned um, lots of possibilities if one um, reads things and hears people who are experts in their fields and um, know that it's not a limited option they have but if they Uh, put some effort into reading. I put some effort into thinking about their career at this stage also. Then, um, then they may um, have more options that they feel at the moment are very limited. I think we have a question. Something flashed here in the box. Yes, there's a question. Uh, Wanch is asking if uh, so, so I can read that. Okay. Yeah. I, I, actuarial science. So, please. Wanch uh, is asking about actuarial science and whether should I go for economic honors or statistics honors along with actuarial science. actuarial science a bunch is a very promising uh, i'll say uh, you know st uh, like to follow go with uh, in fact uh, it is at the it's at a very inception stage in india right now the actual science it's basically about making insurance policies and helping the companies in designing insurance policies which do require a lot of uh, calculations numbers crunchings and statistics for sure economics and statistics is a royal combination uh in case if you are having a maths with commerce with maths i will suggest you all to please take uh, in case if you are interested you can take economics and statistics which is a royal combination in uh, tomorrow's time because we have been talking about analysis lot of data anal analysis is happening the pharma world is opening to analysis and when the pharma world opens to analysis you you i am i really don't know what kind of you know what lucrative offers will be there on the plate for you so economics and statistics is a royal combination if you are very good with numbers if you the numbers interest you statistics is in of your interest please go for it it's a bright future altogether actuarial science as i said it's at a very inception stage at india lot of regulations needs to be done and i'm it's a very promising thing it's a very promising field altogether actuarial sciences but be sure that you really like and you love uh, you know number crunching thank you thank you sir so uh any other questions students okay uh vanch also thanking sir thank Today you so much he sir. he had been asking me actually at some different stages about actuarial science i didn't have much knowledge about that i could just tell him a few things that i learned from google search and uh, he got the answer directly from my sir so thank you very much sir uh mahavanshi mahavanshi please So, uh, Mahavanshi is going to thank present so the much. vote of thanks. Thank you, thank you so much. Thank you so much, sir, for guiding us and answering our questions so patiently. I'm sure that your guidance has clarified all the persistent doubts we encounter about career options available across streams, and will help all of us in deciding future course of education after school. And the uh, recording of this session will be uploaded on school's YouTube link. for students and friends benefit thank you thank you so much babanshi thank, thank you so much ma'am and uh, 12 students the class students in class 12th will move out but uh, i am expecting that in coming year we will be meeting the students of class 11th and 12th so 11th who will be moving in 12th and the new uh, the students will be coming in 11th and not virtually we hope we'll meet in person uh, you know in, at your campus 
Like sure, you- sure, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Our pleasure hosting you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Students.